The International Committee of the Red Cross, or ICRC, have been working around the clock in summer. But what many may not be aware is the ICRC only works in conflict areas. And there's been a low-intensity conflict in summer for decades. Actually, it's an area which is affected by the conflict between the government and the NPA, the New People's Army. It has been so now for, for decades, and we've been there for decades. We have actually an office in Takloban, and our main activities include you know, food distribution in, in terms of emergencies. If you have people displaced by a clash, then we might intervene and, and help them, provide them with uh, support with, with food, non-food items, medical supplies. The NPA uh, declared immediately uh, a, a ceasefire at that time, in November, December. So the conflict had not too much impact uh, on our response, and we managed to co co be able to go very quick, not only on our response, but the global response from all humanitarian actors from the government. Six months on, the people of Sama, who have also faced years of low-level conflict, are rebuilding their lives. But the insecurity caused by the protracted violence has left Sama one of the poorest islands in the Philippines. All along the coastal highway, stretching from Giwan to Legaspi, you'll come across stark reminders of how catastrophic nature's wrath can be. And signs like these, reminding survivors not to rebuild their homes near the shoreline. But for many of the survivors, agriculture, coconut farming and fishing is all they know. Despite receiving cash grants to resume their livelihood or even start a small business, many end up using the aid money just to get by from month to month. Delphin, Rogelio and Eddie are fishermen from Salvation Island, off the coast of Sama. Most of them are reluctant to relocate and want the government to cut the bureaucratic red tape and create more jobs for the people of Sama. So, I think may plano pa yung yung just para sa para sa amin na nabuhay. Maporma uli yung yung dati naming pamumuhay kahit na kahit na yun lang ma may sa ayos lang muli. Kung ano yung mayroon pagpaka ano yun ko para makatulong sa amin. To date, thousands of fisher folk have received a cash grant of 10,000 pesos to procure fishing boats and gear to resume their livelihood. But one thing is evident. Every corner you turn or street or pathway you walk down, you'll come across a survivor. You can still hear the echoes of the suffering, the cries for help that more needs to be done. Kay basta makakuan na ta among pag among mga sarak kay na moy tumagtitik ang kamit pag palawod kun no tagang kamiton dawara pa man itong kami ka tatagian na bagayrat mabulig pag regular amon nya matagang kami gitay nga pakaboy tika nga haigbaw ang baga na tira may himo amon so nga disgrasya kay nan Yolanda kun ako karoyag ko punta adto kami na habok bukid o koy Kay madidala nga ni Obos, oras na ni Dako Tobig, naabot ito na aming barangay. So what's important is to move them, not too far away, because there's a law. This is nothing new. It's just a failure of government to enforce that law. It's called the foreshore land law. You cannot build right beside the ocean. So if you move them away, uh, in such a way where they can get to their source of livelihood, not in a very inconvenient way, and put their boats together so they would have security in times of... Uh, uh, you know, when they leave their boats, they don't want it stolen. So if you put in a system where somebody's always watching, it's like a poor man's marina, then they can watch. But along the coastline, there is a general reluctance to move to safer ground, simply because they've got nowhere else to go. Gladys, who is in her 50s, has seven children between the ages of 11 to 24. Typhoon Yolanda has left them homeless, leaving them with only one choice, to move in next door. Sa akin, naging alit yan amon mga pambot, nga pandagat, nawas out, 
Tapos ang amon ibang pagkabuhi, lalo ng amon balay, na was out, tas tapay na oras na kami pakatindog. Nakikitirala kami at akong tatay. Kung mabag, makagtayo kami bahay, tagay waray man, nagaanto sila anay kami at tatay pagkitira nga harani itong tubig. Waray man kami magawa nga, mababalhinan namon, lalo na ngayon, ang an iyo ginatagaan mo niya, Jismil, Igin, maaram ako sir ang ato nga 10,000 pesos. Diri kami makakapalitan han makina, diri kami makakahimu ang pambot, kay diri magkakahusto. So may da namon anyaw nga linakat nga ito Manila, igin prinda haamon ito nga ay pambot hin 10,000. At ito naman nga 10,000 yung ginataga amon, igin paperinda namon para makapakabuhian ako na asawa. When asked what she wants for her children going forward in life, Gladys shares her dilemma, which pretty much sums up what many poor Filipino families are facing. She knows she's powerless to delay the inevitable, that sooner or later, her older daughter might have to give up her studies and head to Manila in search of a job to support the family. Sabi niya, nanay, pag diri ako maka-eskwila. Malak at Manila. Typhoon Haiyan almost nearly destroyed this district hospital. Now, efforts are underway to build it back better. Some of the survivors here on Summer Island feel the media spotlight from the very onset has been so focused on Tacloban that the plight of survivors in the other affected areas might slowly slip off the radar. Will the survivors of Typhoon Haiyan be forgotten? No. <laughs> no, definitely no. We are even talking among ourselves that we will be talking about this um, event until the end of our lives. Six months on, are the survivors satisfied with the government's promise that it'll embrace the principle of building back better? Is the government doing enough for the survivors? So six months after the typhoon, um, the hospital is quite better. It's quite better um, in the sense that we already have supplies and then um, we have help from the, from the Samar Provincial um, Hospital. Um, they send us um, more doctors to help us with the consultations and with other programs that we are implementing here. It's not just the government that we should be asking for help. We should be helping ourselves. You need to build back better but also faster. And what's important to remember, to be fair to everybody concerned who are working, is that this is a tremendous Typhoon, the biggest in the world to ever hit landfall. And it covers from the east in Tacloban and in Samar, where it hit landfall, and in Surigao in the Mindanao, all the way up to the western South China Sea portion in Palawan. So in between those places are many islands that are, you know, you have to access them by sea, or you have to take, you know, off-road vehicles, especially if you go to the northern areas in the mountains where people lost their homes. So everything that needs to be done must be done as fast as you can.